probably move the can of some flammable compressed gas. Hey! Look at you. That's hot. Just give it more and more and more heat. Melting the... That's just the optimization. Try to not melt my phone as well. All right, guys. Well, welcome back to the Pontiac Project here. Here is my 1971 Pontiac 350 for my 1968 Pontiac Le Mans project, which you can see out yonder in the backyard. Nope, I can't zoom in. It's right there. You can see it. Right there. Uh, initially, we thought this was a all-original car. Turned out it's not at all original. Uh, 1971 block, 1971 matching heads that are crap. Um... Turbo 350 transmission with electronic uh, lockup, which is crap, so all that's bad. But the block is original, and we are going to be able to reuse it, I think. However, we have to get a few things off, so Rich has kindly helped me um, get a few things done that I ran out of energy and uh, ability, maybe. And uh, he has given a proper amount of torch to this. You can see my bruises starting. If you... Uh, you didn't watch that. Oh man, that stuff smells good. Even when it's oh, hot, it smells good. The coil good. is amazing. It's, it's an amazing smell. God, it smells good. Probably massively toxic. I'm sure it's not healthy, <laughs> but it smells good. It does smell good. Croil. Mm. Um, anyway, if you haven't watched that video of me tearing this thing down to where it is now and then punching myself in the face, go watch it. It's a pretty good one. But that gets us to where we are now, or at least where we were just a minute ago. Um, we did get the rest of the front cover off right here. Um, just threw a whole bunch of heat at it. Uh, and we also got the timing cover off, which uh, was not in any way, shape, or form tight. So our timing was definitely off. This thing, I don't believe, has really ever been serviced. I'm not sure anybody ever changed the oil in this motor. It is bad. The lifters don't move really at all. Um, they, none of them will fall out if you roll a block over. Uh, camshaft is destroyed. Uh, but it is original pistons, which means we can punch this thing 30 over or 60 over if we really, really need to. I have no idea how many miles are on this thing, but it gives us a starting lock to be able to make our uh, power plant that we're looking for. The whole idea on this project is to get this thing running at 12 flat and getting it doing it in the next ooh, month and a half or so, um, which means that thing's got to get torn the entire rest of the way down, got to pull everything apart, start cleaning it, and then get it up to Bob McVeigh's to be able to start the cleaning and checking and then machining process to get this Pontiac build going. So that's where we are right now. Uh, if you're interested in this kind of thing, stay, stay tuned. It's going to be lots of me tearing down grody Pontiac stuff, but that's what we're doing here today. Thanks for being here. Hey, look at that. That's why you got that gigantic toolbox full of tools. It's the... More fire. I don't know. This cam loads. We might be able to reuse that cam. <laughs> we grind it.
All done. Don't grab that. It's hot. Don't, yeah, don't touch that. That's, that's warm. Are those half inch probably? Yeah. Piece of cake. It's still warm. <laughs> still warm? Who, who would have imagined that? Oh, yeah, those can Look at that. Nice and tight. Maintenance. <laughs> the gears are almost worn all the way through. The distributor did definitely did not want to come out of this thing either. That lobe's flat. That lobe's flat. Most of them are yeah. a little bit flat. That one's flat. Is there any stampings on this thing? That one's completely flat. There's not much left of, left of him at all. Yeah, it's not really a lobe. <laughs> all right. You rarely wear out. And for the for the lack of oil changes on this, I'm surprised. Well, they don't really hold any load, I guess. They don't hold load, and they don't uh, they don't care. Cam bearings don't care. They they just they're just there, and they're spinning at half the RPM of the yeah of the crankshaft. So the real question is going to be the rod bearings and the crank bearings. I'm sure they're going to be beautiful. But no, oh, I'm sure yeah. that's okay. They look beautiful. Yeah, it looks like cereal bowls. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe this was probably very well maintained. But it is a 1971, which means it's not the later generation, which means it's actually one of the better one of the better Pontiac units. 350 blocks. So it's just disgusting. By the way, before we get too far into this, I just want to say thank you all very much for all of the support so far on this project. You have been awesome. Uh, in exactly two weeks. We managed to get all of the things we needed to do to get this project monetized, to get this channel monetized, which means as soon as YouTube approves me, I can start getting paid for this stuff, which would be neat because this is going to be very expensive. Very expensive. I love YouTube, I do, and I'm actually doing an entire video about that, uh, but never let anybody tell you that it is inexpensive, regardless. Any way you want to look at it, it's not an inexpensive project. I need to move those. Get this torch set up out of the way here. This here is my mobile workbench. You can see I can keep all of my Pontiac goodies in the back here without any problems. There's the heads that came off this guy. They are the matching 1971 heads that came on that motor. Um, not not great, uh, but I don't care because I'm not going to be reusing any of this. Uh, probably will be reusing most of this. Have no idea if I'm going to be reusing that or not. But this is my 2003 Pontiac Vibe GT. It is a 2ZZ powered Toyota Monster. Yes, it says Pontiac on the outside, but... Believe me, it's Toyota. 
let me tell you, it's a beast. 180 horsepower, 8,000 RPM redline, and a six speed manual transmission. Recently replaced six speed manual transmission because may or may not have blown it up on the side of a mountain uh, about a year ago. Shh. Do -do 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 do That'll do, donkey. That'll do. You can see there our uh, our oil pan is looking less than fantastic, but it is reusable. Uh, just some small dents on the bottom, but there was clearly a lack of oil changing there. Um, that's kind of a general theme you're going to see across most of this. Is there was not a lot of oil changing, not a lot of maintenance being done. All my old head bolts and stuff. We'll use this as our catch can for all of our junk that's going to get recycled like all these lifters toss those guys all in there and thank you Richard for knocking some of those down in the block all right let's roll this guy over and start taking things apart on the bottom end it's probably gonna be really hard to do with one hand yep And yes, I am going to do all of this teardown with hand tools. I'm not a power tools kind of guy. I, I, I like doing this the old school way, the way the rest of you guys are doing this in your garage on the floor on a basic you know, engine stand, not using all of the fine capabilities I have here working in the shop. Also because I can't mess up a bay. I can't put my vehicle in here and take a bay out of service because we are a full working shop here. So any work I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to either do in the backyard, in a flat bay, or maybe even take it back to my house and work on it in the garage, at least as much as possible. I want to try to do this kind of the way you guys all would have to do it, make it more honest, more relatable. Oil pickup screen, as you can see, looks great. And by great, I mean totally black. <laughs> I think everything was leaking from this. You can't even tell what color the block was. Other than like back in the very back where I cleaned it off, no. you can't tell. Rod caps have never been off. Or at least they've never been stamped. So. I say, are you getting custom rods for it? I don't think so. I think I can run, I can run Pontiac 400 rods because 350 and 400 cranks are the same crank. So I can run 400 rods with it. The pr question is going to be the pistons. I can get a hold of the rods. Are the 400 rods bigger than the 350 rods? Nope. Oh, they're the same? Yep. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> it's kind of, it's one of those knife-edged oil paint right. pump drives. Yeah, everything everything on this thing was worn out depending on your make model pick and poison uh, these caps are specific to where they are supposed to be as is their orientation now on this you can see where I've got the numbers stamped on the caps so it keeps me from getting them misaligned but Break all these guys loose, and then I've also got to start breaking these uh, rod bolts loose. We'll see what we got as far as the main caps go and all the rod bearings, which I'm sure are going to look great. Oh, come on. Main cap bolts and head bolts. Those are a special kind of stink. 
you never smelt it, you ought to should. You ought to should. Yeah, nobody's ever been in this thing before. Oh, that's such a unique smell. Isn't it? Head bolts and main cap bolts. Main cap bolts. The smell of burnt ass. 40, 40 years of heat cycles. Oh. <laughs> Got a big whiff in it. Yeah. We're going to work on my Mustang. You have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy your odor. Yeah. <laughs> Why do women not like hot rod guys? Well, tell you what, guys, you can tell yourselves as much as you want to. But having a hot rod is going to help you get a hot chick. Almost never actually the case. Why is that? Well, one, because we typically spend all of our motors, our money, on our motors and our cars, as well as most of our time, we could be doing other things with. Two, because we smell like oils and grease and gasoline all the time, and usually don't have clean fingernails. So we pants up. It's not that kind of show. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Ah. Mm. Manly man workout routine. cap bolts are all out start rolling this crank over pull the caps off yeah pull the caps off and we'll pull the rods and pistons out as the last piece and pull the crank out Okay, that looks much better than I expected that to look. It's definitely got some some marks in it, but nothing nothing crazy. general lack of any other kind of maintenance I'm kind of surprised oh come on so. it's seen better days yeah but there's it's still silver <laughs> take your wins where you can Probably polish up just fine. Nothing, nothing super scary so far. Nothing to worry about yet. They're all still silver. There's not one single one that's through the brass so far. They have an interesting texture to them, though. Almost like they're, like, pockmarked. 
it's possible this is a reasonably low mileage motor that was just horribly maintained. Thank you for the Captain Obvious comment, by the way. Richard sometimes gets some shit about the fact that he likes to celebrity shot, walk into the frame and prove that he's smarter than everybody else and walk away. <laughs> but he's done it all. He knows it all. So I guess you're entitled to do that sometimes. i tell you what, guys. Ooh, that one ate some stuff. It's in better shape than I expected it to be, to be honest. You can see, like, there's pock marks actually in the bearing material. But none of these are worn through, which is, to be honest with you, quite shocking. Normally speaking, when these wear through, they wear through this silver part and into the brass piece that's underneath. Um... I'm actually pretty surprised with that. Okay, um, all we really got left is take the rod bolts loose, punch the piston and rod assemblies down through the block, We'll see what we look like there. This part should be easy. This should be quick. There's no more headaches that are left in this bike. Should have a win. Uh, hey, look, it has the lower dipstick tube in it. Yeah, I made a comment about that in the last video. Make sure you got your lower dipstick tube in, because if you don't, you're screwed. Ask me how I know. Pull it back out again. <laughs> Take it back apart again. How do I fix that? Take it apart. Oh, I'll tell you what. I'm excited to be done with this portion of this project for sure. But the problem is, the next portion of this project is the part where I spend all the money. Which I'm not super excited about but i do want to keep this very budget oriented i don't want to go out and spend boatloads of money because a i don't have boatloads of money b it makes it unrelatable you know when you watch a lot of these big youtube channels they just go out and buy a big you know 10 or 15 20 thousand dollar crate motor and five thousand dollar transmission and eight thousand dollars with a suspension and five thousand dollars with the brakes and then wham bam thank you ma'am put it all together and i don't know like it just to me that's just like it's not relatable most people can't do that at least most people in the hot rod motor or industry that i know and not that there's anything wrong you guys about that if that's your shtick if that's your thing good for you It's just not, not, not my shtick, you know? All right, in order to roll this guy over, crankshaft bolt. Thread her back in there, and that'll allow us to turn this, instead of grabbing onto the actual snout of the crankshaft, we'll grab onto the bolt and turn the bolt. Most people will just grab it with a set of channel locks or something but I'm gonna grab the bolt kind of guy and turn the crankshaft instead of grabbing the crankshaft guy that's just me
No, come on. Okay, we're just gonna hit him. Man. What the like we need. Good God. Good job, you got one out. One. <laughs> one. All right. We had a bad accomplishment there. One. Now I could reuse these rods, and I may, but um, with a set of pistons on it, you're definitely going to want to rebalance this thing to get the entire assembly as balanced as possible especially if we're going to be doing a lot of rpms in this thing oh cool one of those rod bolts threads are destroyed but we would also be putting rod bolts in it arps would be the upgrade um, if you are going to recondition these piston or these uh rods and reuse these you would put uh, upgraded R arp bolts in them all right one Looks fine. Two. Pretend like you're trying to catch a baby here. Don't just knock him out on the floor. If you're wondering why I work alone and I work at night when nobody else is here, it's because it's quiet and I get work done and good quality filming. Man, I'm telling you, none of these bearings are worn badly, which is absolutely crazy. And they are all, I can even read the part number, 62095. GMMA. Yeah, that one ate a little bit of something, but generally speaking, these rod bearings are in amazingly good shape. I think this genuinely was a, a low mileage 1971 motor that just was very poorly taken care of. I mean, realistically speaking, like these rods are not, these rod bearings are not bad. I would 100% trust them to get me several thousand more miles. I'm not left-handed, just FYI. There we go, catch the baby. That's supposed to work. Wild. Yeah. Some good news, some bad news on this thing. 
Unfortunately, the good news I don't care about because I'm not going to reuse them. I want you guys to also understand something here. One of the reasons I'm shooting this the way I'm shooting it is I, I want you to understand that I understand the frustration of the day-to-day -day working on a project. You know, you're trying to build something in your garage. You're trying to make something cool for yourself and your family and, you know, go on a, on a road trip or go on an adventure or whatever the case may be. And it's a daily struggle, man. You got to get out there in the garage. You got to turn the wrench. You got to hit yourself in the face or something. You know, it's a, it's a daily struggle. You got to get the motivation up to get out there and do it. And you got to just do it. You might not want to, you might not like it, but if you don't get out there and work on it, it's not gonna get worked on. And then that project, like this one, is gonna get set in the back, forgotten about for half a decade, or maybe longer, and you're never gonna do it. You gotta get out there and turn that wrench. Film yourself. Encourage yourself to do it every single day. Just get a little bit more done. Get a little bit more done. Get a little bit more done. And you'll get it done. And yes, that is Rich's Buick 455 pulling in on the uh, alignment rack over there. Plays a good tune though. It does play a good tune. Who needs a radio when you can listen to that? I don't have a radio in any of my classic stuff. All I need is a really good drum solo. Everywhere I go. That's all I need. It's like it's like the old <laughs> hairband rock music. That's what I, that's all I need. My buddy, my, my neighbor's a drummer, and he's like, dude, that thing sounds awesome. I'm like, oh, it's it, it's the same feeling. That's exactly what it is, man. It's, a, it's an old fashioned drum solo. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Thank you for the celebrity shot. <laughs> so, uh, you'll cut it out. Probably not. You can still read the. You can still read the bearing numbers. Those are seen some days. Yeah, but they're not. I mean, in the grand not, scheme of they're, things, they're not beating out of it, you know. Yeah. Missed the baby on that one. Oh, toe. Nope. Sound, sounded like you missed your toe. Yep, I didn't hit myself. Yeah, I mean, you. They have got like a like a varnishing, like a pockmark to them, but. But they're not terrible. Back when we knew how to make bush, bushings and bearings here in the state. Crankshaft is 4813. I don't think that means much of anything. There's never there's no grinding on any of the rods, so nobody's ever gone in here and no, it's never gone far. Done any any work. That's good. That means you don't have to fix stuff that right. has already been messed up. Other than 12 millimeter bolts and my mixed in with my half inch bolts, mixed in with my three eighths inch bolts in places that shouldn't have been metric in the first oh, place. It's always fun pulling metric bolts out of standard. I don't know whether or not it was started out life as a 12 millimeter, but it finished that life that way. One more surprise. Hey, there's an extra lifter. Hate it. 
Just whack it. It'll come off. Catch the baby. <laughs> Got it. That is one greasy, nasty motor, man. It is. It was leaking everything, I think. It, <laughs> it leaked everything. Whatever it wasn't leaking, it was burning. But, it's like a rust preventative, right? You just coat everything in oil. Bearings. I mean, literally not one of these is down to the brass. Not a single one. Which is wild to me. You can shoot this over to Bob. Yeah. That's going to be the next step. Let's run it over to Bob. We've got to check the cylinder walls and make sure she's machinable. Make sure I don't have anything that I don't see. Clean the hell out of it, which is going to take like a day. And then, if it's workable, figure out just how much money I'm going to spend. Cool. Good start. <laughs> Yeah, get past the part where I, it's all free. Right. It's just labor. Let's get to the expensive part. Yep. That's the thing that was making all the noise in the background. Sorry about that. Anyway, guys, uh, we're pretty much done. Um, better than I expected it to be, to be quite honest with you. Right there she is. I gotta pull the crankshaft out, which is the last little thing. But, um,. Not bad. Not nearly as bad as I was expecting from the terrible lack of maintenance we saw on the top end. Um, I mean, there's definitely some wear on the crankshaft. It's not perfect. You can see where it's eaten a couple of things. Uh, but it's in pretty dang good shape, to be honest with you. It is in pretty dang good shape. Um... The bottom end has never been touched. Original bearings, original rings, um, original pistons, <laughs> probably the original camshaft. Pistons have never been touched. Rods have never been touched. You can see where it's worn the sides there of the pistons. Um, cylinder walls definitely have got some wear on them. But with being a stock bore, that still leaves us a ton of uh, room that we can, we can work those uh, cylinder walls. So I got to knock out the block plugs, uh, freeze out plugs, a couple of other things, and then load it in the back of something, probably that. Uh, and I will get this thing off to Bob McVeigh's. So that's going to be the next phase of this Pontiac 350 engine build. It's going to go to Bob's. We're going to check it and make sure that everything's good. Clean it, check it, and then we'll build our plan from there. Ideally, as I said at the beginning of this video, the idea here is to be able to make enough power to be able to push that 1968 Pontiac Le Mans into the 12s, which is a high order, I know, out of 350 cubic inches. It's doable. Um, but I also want this thing to be somewhat drivable if possible. If we could make this thing kind of a drag and drive car, that would be sweet. I would like that. It would give it the ability to be used as something other than just a purpose-built drag car. Do I need a drag and drive car? Well, no. But I would like one. It would be neat. Or maybe I could have two. I basically already have one. Um, it needs a lot of work. It's got a... Uh, it needs floors. It needs a roof. It needs... Uh, it needs things. It needs brakes. It's on four-wheel drums at the moment. It's going to need wheels and tires. It's going to need a lot of work. Um, you can see that there's a hole there in the roof. There's somebody tried to... I don't know. I, I don't know. It needs trunk pans. It needs trunk extensions. It needs probably rear frame rails. It's going to need a posi rear end. It's got a lot, it's got a lot of things it's going to need. Um, and not a lot of time to do it in. But, you know, that's... That's the story. That's what motivates you, right? If you've got a, if you've got a deadline that you've got to hit, that's what motivates you. That's what, 
makes you want to work on this stuff is when you know you got to get it done for a certain time. And I think it's doable. I think it is doable. I also, like I said, I want to keep this relatable. I want to keep this in something that normal wrenching guys can do. Somebody would want to do with their own time and their own money. I don't want to just chuck $10,000 at this thing and say, yippee, here we go. I've made a $8,000 car by spending $15,000. That's not what I want to do here. I want to keep this relatable. I want to keep it somewhat budget friendly. I realize building a muscle car on a budget is stupid and it doesn't ever work, but we can try. We can lie to ourselves about it. Um, and that's the plan, guys. That's, that's where we are with it. Um, so this is going to go in the back of the Pontiac Vibe GT race car. Uh, I have tomorrow got to get a Mopar crate motor off the back of a truck for a CUDA project coming up um, on the main channel. And I need the flatbed for that because I have a hood for this car waiting at JEGS. Uh, and my airbrush artist is going to do some magic wizardry on that to be able to make me a really cool hood. Reason being, the hood that came on this car was A, junk, B, crushed by a fat guy. And I'll show you that footage in, in, in the video that we do with the hood stuff. So that's coming up here soon. Um, I've got to run to Cleveland possibly tomorrow or the next day. Um, I got a gentleman up there that I connected with through DEI, Mr. Mike, uh, who happened to have a set of Pontiac number 62 heads, which I think will pair nicely with a uh, high compression 350 build. So I got to figure out when I'm going to get up there to get those. Then I got to bring those back and we're going to have to do all kind of work on those. That'll be a future thing. Um, and then we got to go through the whole, you know, what parts we're going to use, what combination of stuff we're going to use to be able to make enough power to be able to push that thing into the, the 12 flat. That's the idea. Um, I've also got sitting over here on the floor, a AMC 360 that I need to tear down, which is going to come up here in the next day or two. Um, because that's going to go in probably one of the AMXs. Uh, we happen to have three. 1979 AMC Spirit AMXs, and I kind of really, really want to build one with boost, and I think that might be the block that we're going to use for that. So, um, forged rods and pistons and um, throw eight, ten pounds with a boost at it and see what happens. So, that's, a, that's an option as well. That's probably coming up. I got a lot of things going on. I just want to say thank you very much for everybody who has uh, been on this channel, who's been paying attention to this. This is just my own little tiny side project stuff. It's it's not stuff I'm officially doing through the shop. This is just kind of my weekends and evening, me wrenching on stuff and working on things. Um, it's mostly going to be me doing stuff with hand tools and that kind of thing, at least at this point in time. I have no idea where this channel is going to end up, so I don't know. Stick around, I guess. Um, hopefully you enjoy this kind of content, and I will do my best to take you through it, and I will share my daily struggles and my daily experiences with you. They're all adventures, guys. They're all adventures. If it was a, a smooth sailing from point A to point B... What would be the memory? You know? Anyway, thanks for being here, guys. I do truly appreciate you. I will see you next time, and I have no idea what that's going to be. But I'll see you next time. Take care. Mm. Oh, that's a heavy son of a bitch.